G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, sad day afternoon here in Australia, market up ever so slightly again, so now $2.33 trillion, uh, quite nice. Bitcoin dominance again rising, now above 44%, just how high can this go? Obviously people are getting excited about Bitcoin, look people are still getting into altcoins as well, but I think people are more bullish on uh, Bitcoin at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how this kind of pans out once like Bitcoin's already been on a bit of a run I suppose but once it really starts to pick up Will that really suck a lot of the liquidity out of the altcoins or are we just at a point now in this cycle? If this is playing out like it has previously Where everything's just going to kind of rise together I mean one day it'll probably be Bitcoin the next day it's altcoins then the next day it's Bitcoin, then the next day it's altcoins. Because that's about kind of how hectic it was towards the end of the 2017 bull run. It'd literally be Bitcoin and maybe one or two other coins would pump one day. and then the, Or maybe for sort of two days. And then the next day, those same coins would uh, sell off just a little bit. And other altcoins would be running. It was like just a back and forth thing. It truly was uh, hectic. That was a good way to put it. Now, will that play out the same this time? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I, I think there's going to be elements that are same, are the same, sorry, but I think there's definitely going to be elements that aren't the same because no one, if they were trying to outplay the market, particularly if they're a big player, would let it play out just the same way it did last time because then everyone knows what's coming. So there's always going to be differences. It's just whether diff the differences will be large or whether they'll just be minor because I don't think anyone really wants to, you know, really knock this on the head too hard. Most people want to let it run to see just how much, you know, gains they can get. But, you know, again, when and where will the big players step in to then go, all right, that's enough. We're not letting it go on any further. Uh, and we want to dump it now to, again, buy back in cheaper and all the rest of it. And whether, you know, whether their hearts are in this truly for the long term or this is just a quick way to make some money, try and dump the market uh, really hard and, you know, big players possibly could. And then just buy in a whole lot cheaper again. You know, that is the game of uh, most people is, you know, buy low, sell high, and then wait for it to go low and buy in and all the rest of it. But we'll have to wait again and see whether all these big players that have come in, whether they're really here because they believe in the space. And as they say, you know, I'm here for the tech. That usually what you, that's usually what people are saying, you know, when they're losing money or whether they're just here to, you know, again, make some gains and jump in and out of the market, i.e. be traders and speculators more than uh, true enthusiasts. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Right, Bitcoin price just... Over $54,500, which is not too bad. Again, it did get up to around about sort of $56,000. So we'll just have to see what happens. We'll have a look at the chart slightly, which is showing a bit of a picture. And look, gas prices sitting around about sort of $6. Again, that is a very basic transaction. You try and do a smart contract transaction. It's definitely going to cost you uh, a little bit more. It can be around sort of 50 60 bucks, depending where you are. And maybe even more on certain sites. So that is the scary part. All right, the top 100. What's performed the best in the last 24 hours? All right, there we go. Seller Network, 35%. Nice. Harmony, 20%. Nice. Shiba Inu, pumping again. Ekomi, MDEX, uh, IOST token, Filecoin, uh, making some nice moves. Curve, Cello, Clay. I mean, look. Even Matic, nice, finally making some moves, $1.36, very nice. Axie Infinity, you know, heaps of nice gains. Even Solana, which is good. I might just be about even on my Solana buy now. Possibly not, actually. I think I was more up around 170 ish so I'm probably still down a little bit. All right, lots of nice gains, and again, that's to be expected considering the market's up. What hasn't fared so well in the top 100 then? What's been the worst performer? All right, there we go. Luna, but 6%. So the worst loss in the top 100 is 6.3%. And Luna was pumping only a few days ago. So, you know, you, you got to take, you know, so those, you know, minor corrections, and that's what these are at the moment, with those pumps, because it can't just continue to pump. The harder something pumps with no uh, sort of pullbacks, the bigger the, you know, the correction slash pullback is going to be when they finally do come. But look, very minimal sort of losses here, hardly anything uh, and the gains were quite nice. But in saying that, the market's only up 1.2%. So it's not really, you know, the, the gains are nice, don't get me wrong, but this market isn't really pumping yet. You know, 
when this market goes up by, you know, 6, 7, 10, sometimes even 15% in sort of 24 hours, I mean, that's when, you know, things are starting to, yeah, get pretty hectic. You know, even a 5 cent, um, you know, market pump uh, is pretty spectacular in the ones that do well. All right, so let's move on. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Here we are. All right, as I sort of thought, we're just holding on. And it does look like we're going to come down and most likely have a, a good proper retest of this 52,000. I mean, technically, you could probably say this is, but at the moment, we're just chopping around uh, above it, up and down a little bit. The weekend has only just sort of started uh, stateside time now, so we're in the thick of it, right in the middle of it, basically, here in Australia. So we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, stateside time and things like that. Again, whether this is going to hold a support, it has been for a while. Really, that $54,000 mark, $53,000 mark seems pretty nice. I mean, we had that kind of... Uh, I forget what that candle pattern's gone. Shooting star, I think it is, going down. Big long tail, little thing on the end. So we'll have to wait and see what that's going to do to the price. I mean, it looked like it's bounced back pretty hard there. I mean, not pretty hard, but it's bounced back nicely at the moment anyway. But it's still very early. We'll have to wait and see. But my guess is hopefully we use this 52, sort of $53,000 level as support, maybe bounce around here until sort of Monday, and that's stateside time, not so much Australia time, and then we start to slowly mac our way back up. But the good thing is, we are in this long-term upwards channel, back in there. Again, we broke out uh, twice, got a little bit scary, but then we're straight back in it. Excuse me, but the exciting part is, you know, is Bitcoin going to do something like this where it breaks out to the upside of this channel again? I tell you what, it'd be really nice, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It depends on, you know, the momentum and all sorts of things going on around the world. You know, the FOMO, there's FOMO now between, you know, anyone who's in the crypto space really right now has probably been here for a while and is probably going to be here for a while because the retail sentiment, they got out back around sort of here and it just went down and they just lost track and lost hope and again sold for losses and all the rest of it it's not that there's no retail here because really anything outside of institutional is retail but really it's only the people that really do kind of believe in crypto uh they don't have to so much be, have been here for a, for a long time but they just believe in the space so they're not ready to sell yet and while this was exciting this hasn't shaken them out and they are just seeing this as all right well basically <laughs> we're getting back to uh, an old time an old sort of peak and now hopefully about to use that as support before again hopefully moving on to bigger and better things all right a couple of stories i wanted to look at i won't take up too much more of your time it is the weekend everyone wants to be out enjoying it so this is interesting joe biden could be working on an executive order to control the crypto industry uh, a report has said now, not control it in exactly the way you think, but it could be good and it could be bad. It really depends on how it plays out. So it says here, some of the agencies involved in this executive order would be, we've got the Treasury Department, the Commerce Department, the National Science Foundation, the FTSC, the CFTC, the IRS, and the National Security Council. And the idea is that these agencies will inform the White House on, the, on how they would regulate various edges because they none of these agencies are, are likely to really rule crypto you know in total there'll just be elements of it that they would have sort of some say and some governance over so they all get together they pass that information on to the biden administration and then they look for ways how to coordinate all of these visions uh, uh, and competencies uniformly now they, this could be good but i don't think it will be as good as what people uh, are hoping don't get me wrong the USA is not going to come out and crush crypto. They just can't afford to. They will come off being basically like China if they did. No government wants to be like China and restrict the public from a free and uh, open marketplace. But that doesn't mean they're going to come in and just have these fancy free regulations that are good for the little end of town and don't keep the big end of town uh, in the big end. Unfortunately, there is going to be... Uh, It'll be a heavy compromise uh, on our side on the retail. Unfortunately, it would the the red the sorry the regulation and legislation will allow us 
to, you know, get some pennies from it. Don't get me wrong. But it is going to look after the big end of town. I have no doubt about that. The way they will sell it is, oh, look how good it is for you because we won't really understand all the legislation at first. It'll look like it's pretty good for us and then eventually it'll most likely turn out, oh, no, it's the big end of town again that are being looked after. Uh, and the little guy, they get the crumbs on the end. That is what I'm worried about. I could be wrong. I really could be. Maybe Joe Biden, although I think it's highly unlikely, uh, is going to look after the little guy for once. But unfortunately, if you've made it to the point where you can just be nominated to be Prime Minister, uh, President, sorry, Prime Minister, that's here in Australia, President or Prime Minister, it doesn't really matter where you're at in the world, whatever type of leader, you've most likely already been corrupted by the big end of town and your owe favours and all the rest of it and you, you know, you're in the thick of it. So I am definitely concerned that, you know, whatever rules and regulations they come with at the end of it, it will, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there won't be any gains in cryptocurrency for people who are in it, but I just get the feeling like the big end of town will be protected. They're not going to let that old system change. It's probably going to be, you know, unfortunately another, you know, depending on where you are, again, prime minister or president or two, you know, we need the younger generation, i.e. slash the millennials uh, and things like that to finally get into power. And they'll change that. In the future, I have no doubt cryptocurrencies will be the way of the future. It's just now, I mean, you know, Joe Biden, I don't know how old he is. I'm guessing he's, you know, 70 odd. He's heavily entrenched in that old system. And even he wouldn't want that old system to, you know, basically be defunct and go away because it would severely hurt uh, his interests uh, and all his friends' interests. So this has me a little bit worried. It has the potential to possibly be good, but unfortunately, I just don't think it will be. Not for the little guys anyway. Like I said, for the big end of town, uh, it'll most likely look after them quite well. Right, BlockFi. So I have, uh, you know, I've got an account with BlockFi. There's a link down below. I'll be honest with you, it's hard to sign up. Uh, it's not easy. I tried I think two or three times the third time I finally stuck with it and finally got there and the rewards were quite good initially now the rewards aren't co aren't so good and that I think has a lot to do with uh, regulations uh, regulators really putting the heat on them but anyway they're still there and they are paying rewards they're not truly awful it's just the Bitcoin rewards unfortunately they only pay a somewhat reasonable percent for like uh, I think 0.2 of a Bitcoin after that you're really not making much at all uh, and look, Celsius is paying better at the moment, but I still like BlockFi. I haven't pulled my money out and I don't have a link for Celsius down below, but I will in the not too distant future. I keep meaning to do that and don't do that. But anyway, moving on. So BlockFi, they have filed for a Bitcoin futures ETF. This is what disappoints me a little bit. Not that they're filing for an ETF, but that it's going to be a futures one. But unfortunately, they're the, well, that's the ETFs that are most likely going to get through it first. So it says the fund would only invest in Bitcoin futures contracts uh, traded on the CME. So I, I just wonder how that's going to help their members moving forward. I wonder if, the again, all of a sudden the Bitcoin interest that you can get can only be paid in dollars and then you're going to have to take your dollars because that's how Bitcoin futures ETFs will be settled. They'll be settled in dollars. They won't be settled in Bitcoin. And will they then basically just be paying everyone, you know, dollars uh, in interest and then you're going to have to go and buy the cryptocurrencies you want? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I really like BlockFi still and I hope that they don't just you know, cave to regulation. I mean, unfortunately, they all do. That's the sad point. But I hope regulation doesn't come in and just, again, kind of clip this whole industry. And again, great programs like BlockFi that, you know, pay interest. Um, you know, number one, it's compound, which is really good. Uh, number one, it's just really good interest rates, or at least were. They're still good on uh, some of the altcoins, uh, and particularly the dollar and thing like that. It's just, unfortunately, their Bitcoin interest is uh, very, very minimal. Um We'll have to wait and see. And again, I, I hope that doesn't, the fact that they're going for a Bitcoin futures ETF, and they, they won't get the first one. They'll probably be towards the, the back end of the line. But I hope that that doesn't somehow then play out that, you know, anyone who's staking their Bitcoin there, it can only be paid out in uh, US dollars. And then you got to, again, go and, you know, trade those US dollars for Bitcoin and then you get hit for tax again. And so that'll be an issue. That's what worries about me. It's not that I'm against paying tax, but I don't want to have to pay tax twice to get my Bitcoin interest. I'd like it to be just simply paid in Bitcoin. And when I sell it, I then pay uh, interest as opposed to, you know, paying interest, 
on the interest and then paying interest when I go and buy the Bitcoin. And, and that's something that concerns me. Whether it'll play out like that or not, we'll have to wait and see, but something to keep an eye out for. But look, I'm glad BlockFi is still around and still doing their thing. They, you know, they're obviously trying hard in very uh, trying circumstances, particularly with the lack of red regulation we have at the moment and the you know, sort of scare tactics that have been done that maybe regulation could be really heavy handed. And again, this is really where it is, uh, where it's sort of at at the moment. What will Joe Biden do? I like that he's getting information from a whole stack of different sources. Again, rather than just saying, well, this is the SEC and they're in charge, get that, you know, overall perspective. But yeah, can he, you know, release the reins on that old system and let this new system flourish? I just, I'm not sure. I don't think he can. He is well and truly, uh, yeah, in that old traditional finance system and well entrenched. And I think the red, the regulations and legislation won't be, that I know they won't be as favourable as what we'd like. But I do think they they will change over time. Uh, but unfortunately, it won't be under Joe Biden's uh, administ administration. I'm quite sure of that. All right, China. So they have now added that their uh, their citizens cannot invest in uh, crypto mining. Uh, stocks and things like that so they've even said that is off limits so they are really doing everything they can to try and stop their uh, Chinese citizens from having anything to do with crypto at the moment it's disappointing not just for you know the crypto space but for the Chinese people as well I mean they really were part of excuse me you know pushing cryptocurrencies forward they really got into it you know, in a big way and now you know they did so much to you know push the space forward you know crypto mining and things like that and their government now has just cracked down on them big time and made it you know near impossible for them to invest in cryptocurrencies at all and yeah we'll have to wait and see you know they've done a lot to really push not just the mining part but just you know push the prices up you know everyone says you know oh here comes asia uh, china's a lot of asia it's not all of asia but it's definitely a lot of it and a lot of money came from china into cryptocurrency and now it's just yeah become very hard for them to try and be part of this you know revolutionary space and again you know hopefully america doesn't sort of follow suit and again do something silly and just be really heavy-handed with regulation they won't come in and ban it i know that uh, they can't afford to they need to be you know at the forefront of the new financial system and it is cryptocurrency everyone knows that unfortunately china think they can uh, force their own digital yuan on their citizens but the funny thing is china hasn't banned all of crypto mining they still have crypto miners there but they're the ones that fit in with the cpp and i have no doubt that china are probably taking a percentage of those bitcoins and things like that and keeping them for themselves because they don't mind you know using that stuff outside of their country but they don't want their citizens using anything other than the digital yuan within their country e even on the outside but again they can't really stop things like you know dydx and all that you know those decentralized kind of platforms but they can make it extremely hard for their citizens to try and access them so we'll have to see where that all goes sad for uh, again, the, Ch the the Chinese people, you know what I mean? The Chinese people I've met, pretty nice, you know, not bad people. It's just they have a, yeah, I mean, a hard government that uh, really do like to, you know, make all the final decisions in their country. And, you know, you want a government that leads, but you don't want a government that dictates and just basically, you know, rules everything. That That's... Yeah, it's not democracy, uh, and I'm all about democracy, in fairness. All right, last but not least, Binance ceases crypto derivative services in South Africa. So basically what that is, is it's longs and shorts and things like that. They've, they've gotten rid of it over in South Africa, and they're doing that in a lot of places all around the world, or at the if they have any, it's just very small amounts. I think it's no more than 5x or 10x or something like that. That's all they have. So Binance, again, they're doing everything they can to try and appease regulators around the world. They still need to have a central point, which they don't have, which is what regulators are really, really worried about. But I think they also know that once they have a central point, that's when people can come in and you know just be heavy-handed and really crush them. As long as they don't have one, 
you know, governments can't do that. But in saying that, it's becoming harder and harder for them to operate around the world and their the window of what they can do is getting smaller and smaller because they aren't simply open and transparent. Or again, open and transparent as in they have a headquarters where regulators can just go and, you know, ask to see things and ask to speak people. That really is the issue. All right, that's it for me. So not a whole lot going on. Uh, Story-wise, it's the weekend. We generally don't get a lot of news, but that Joe Biden stuff I thought was very interesting. And again, waiting to see if Bitcoin is just going to hold this line at sort of 52-ish thousand dollars until, you know, again, we can pump during weekends. It's not unheard of, but at the moment it looks like we're probably going to bounce around down low here, 50, sort of two to 54,000, and then hopefully start to make our way back back up and really I think once we get to about the $58,000 level thereabouts if we start to go above that I think you know it, it's definitely possible we have a rejection from $64,000 but I just get the feeling like it's probably not going to take too much to get through this I think we're more likely again to get through it and then come back down uh, and keep bouncing off it uh, as support but look anything can happen in this market just when you think you got it figured out it's going to do something that you never thought uh, well I won't say never thought, but you really didn't think was likely uh, and it becomes likely. Uh, and again, then all of a sudden you think, oh no, it really is bearish. And then all of a sudden it turns bullish. That is cryptocurrencies. And, and I mean, that's markets in general. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.